if you can keep your ambient temperature above 20 degrees Celsius and are growing in inorganic media using a semi-hydroponic setup, this video may not apply to you. But if you are considering transferring your Cattleyantha orchids into inorganic media using LECA being the go-to media of choice, then definitely keep watching because I'm going to save you a lot of headaches and possibly your Cattleyanthus as well. Meanwhile, if you are growing in organic media with a wet dry cycle culture, you might want to stick around as well because I will point you in the right direction as to why your Cattleyanthus may not be performing as well as you would like them to. All in all, we are going to take back control when living with these bifoliate divas. <laughs> Let's just state the obvious about Catliantha. They are bifoliates. Enough said. If you don't understand why I said that, well, keep watching as well because I'm going to explain the typical statement of why bifoliate Catlias, usually called Catlianthus, come with a notorious reputation of being divas. It is often said that they are prone to dumping their roots at the mere thought of a repot, as in viable roots will die when disturbed. Amongst other reasons that I will cover, this is the one not so fun fact about Catlianthi orchids. <laughs> For that reason, it is absolutely fundamental that you do not repot a Catliantha orchid without the actual site of new root nubbins starting because of that very possibility of the old roots throwing a fit and perishing in the pot no matter how gentle you were during the repot. Even if you receive a new Catliantha and the media looks old and degraded, I highly recommend you do not repot the orchid thinking you're doing her a favor by giving her fresh media around the roots. That could possibly still be viable in the pot unless you see the new roots growing. Also, please do not feel encouraged to repot any new Catliantha that comes into your collection or you already have one in your collection and you see a new growth growing. Just because she may be growing a new growth, it does not mean that new roots are soon on the way. It can take a whole growth cycle for that new growth to produce its own roots because sometimes Catlianthus grow a new growth to full size and only when a spike forms will new roots grow and they may not even grow at the base of the new growth instead they push out from the base of the previous growth on top of that a new growth may take eight months to mature and if that orchid has been repotted too soon the back bulbs will struggle to make it happen the new growth won't grow to full potential and the energy consumption for the new growth to mature will cause the back bulbs to take a hit and it is possible that the catlianthi you have grows new roots from the previous growth not the new growth so do you see how i'm trying to give you the intel on how to best live with a diva under your roof if you have any questions as you think through your collection please comment away i can even be more specific than this in the comments but would you also take a moment to leave your dna on the like button as well as add your dna on the share the video feature and then of course while you are at it please subscribe to the channel as well well, and know that I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much. So back to our Catliantha divas and roots. Once the roots of a Catliantha have taken such a hit as is possible with a repot and new roots are not already on the way, it is extremely difficult to get the orchid to recover in a timely manner before she collapses into nothingness. Or the best case scenarios that you can be faced with are set back for several years or the orchid just stalls and throws a sulk until the orchid has another established root system, again, which can take eight months to even show their gorgeous emerald green nubbins at the base of the rhizome. And on top of that, Catlianthus are not exactly prolific root growers unless the Catlia parent is also a prolific root grower. But to have four new roots as a possible result growing and then expect that to sustain the orchid while it comes out of its funk? That is asking a lot. Make a mistake with those four new roots again and the orchid is just not going to survive. Or you will be hard pressed to get her to recover and then patience is the key. Another reason these orchids are so easily set back or stall and can collapse rapidly is because they do not come with substantial structures that can hold a lot of energy for emergencies. Energy for emergencies in the way other Catlias can whose pseudobulbs are thicker and have more substance. Catliantha orchids usually have thin, long pseudobulbs or short, 
thin pseudobulbs, and while it would appear that an orchid has a lot of them, they require a lot more energy to produce new roots and growth as any other genus in the Cattleya Alliance. With a new orchid order arriving, you may also get something that looks like a mature orchid, but on closer inspection, you may just have two orchids in the same pot, giving the illusion of a single orchid with plenty of growth to sustain any premature repot. Once in the process of repotting, you then come to the realization that you have two orchids, each of them with not that many thin pseudobulbs to give the orchid a setback free continuous growing opportunity after the repot. With the not so helpful thin structures in mind, the first sign your catlianth is struggling will be, of course, the shriveling of the existing pseudobulbs and you will not be in any doubt whatsoever that your orchid is struggling, it happens quickly. Then, if you're lucky, your orchid will stall. The new growth will grow, but it will not grow to size because it has no viable roots in the new pot with new media. So bit by bit, the energy is taken out of the back leaves and they will just yellow and dry off, leaving a leafless, shriveled pseudobulb behind. And in time, it may be another set of leaves that will drop off and so on and so forth, depending on when the new roots start. Remember that Cattleyanthe is another genus made up of Cattleya and Guarianthe. While Guarianthe Guarianthes are tough by foliates, the other Cattleya parent may not be, and it is the Guariantha that brings the thin pseudobulbs into the Cattleyanthe Greg. To be on the safe side when it comes to the culture of Cattleyanthe orchids, I highly recommend going with a wet-dry cycle. That does not mean you are limited to a bark mix, but with a few exceptions, I have as yet to figure out the right way to cultivate Cattleyanthe orchids in Lekka and a semi-hydroponic setup indefinitely without doing any damage of the examples that you have seen so far. I have exceptions, yes, but I am watching them closely and I'm considering to switch them to chunky lava rock just to be on the safe side because, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you can keep your Cattleyanthe in a warm environment where the ambient temperature does not drop below 20 degrees Celsius, then you are okay to grow them in Lekka and a semi-hydroponic setup. What I have found is that these warm growing orchids do do not tolerate cold temperatures around their roots and add cold with wet, the roots will take a hit and we're back to setback or stalled orchids. Remember that Lekka has an evaporative cooling effect, so if your ambient temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, my guesstimate is that the pot temperature is around 17 degrees Celsius. That, for me, is the cutoff mark for a warm growing orchid when it comes to what the temperature is in the pot. In addition to that, you cannot grow an orchid in Lekka and have it on a wet dry cycle because the Lekka will wick the moisture out of the existing roots when left to go dry. So, if you want to grow your Cattleyanthe orchids inorganically in a wet-dry cycle, then please use lava rock. Usually, the root size of Cattleyanthes are medium to large in circumference, so you are safe with using chunky lava rock as opposed to going to a medium-sized lava rock. In this way, you're not having to worry about your media degrading while still being able to give the roots the dry cycle during colder temperatures without any detriment to the orchid. When it comes to the fertilizing or supplementing experience that I have managed to garner with Cattleyanthus is that they love calcium, all of them, across the board. And then there are some that love a good hit of magnesium on a regular as well. It is as if they prefer these two components above everything else in their food supply. As you may have noticed, noticed with the examples I've been showing you, some are on their almost last legs of me trying to figure out their Lekka ratio, but I had to call it in 2023 and rescue the ones in dire straits by using lava rock only. And these have been babied with calcium nitrate, CalMag, and low concentrations of fertilizer to ensure that their currently existing roots won't collapse on me during the winter of 23 and 24. Let me qualify what I mean when I say they love their calcium and their magnesium above other nutrients. It doesn't mean that my concentration would be higher with calcium or magnesium. It means that I am favoring these two nutrients above the fertilizer. So my concentration during the recovery mission of my candidates is 100 parts per million of calcium nitrate, and then 150 parts per million of CalMag, and then 100 parts per million of fertilizer. If the orchid comes into active growth, I will administer two times the calcium nitrate before I even go to the 
fertilizer, meaning back to back as opposed to doubling the parts per million. I hope that makes sense, especially seeing as I'm not going high in the parts per million, instead I'm applying it more than I do the fertilizer. Even a healthy, well-growing cat Leanthe will perform so much better if it gets more calcium and more magnesium. I have noticed that with my cat Leanthe White Bridal, and she's not even a big version of a cat Leanthe. Now just to clear up what I am hoping to achieve here with the ones in Lava Rock for the coming season and the new growths and hopefully I can give you some insights as to what you can expect if you are in a similar situation and looking forward to get another new growth to start with yours. I am hoping to get a new growth that matches the smaller new growth from the previous year. I'm not working towards a size jump nor am I working towards blooms. My target for 2024 is very conservative and if you have Catlianthus in a similar state then your expectations should also be conservative. Just a new growth with healthy looking leaves, not curled up and freaking out like some of mine are, and with that another new root system. If they make it through the next winter, then in 2025, I can be a little bit more ambitious, and so on and so forth. As far as my cat Leantha Siamese doll Kiwi, I do not like what I'm seeing at all, and I will be switching her into Lava Rock only when the time is right. It appears I have two of them in this pot, and it is clear that one of them is struggling, and I've only picked up on that in recent years, because there's a clear distinction between one side of the pot as opposed to the other. Anyway, if you're still here, two more nuggets of intel that could prove helpful to you are Catlianthus are very prone to Fasarium because of their diva attributes. Weakened orchids are anyway prone to succumbing to disease or getting infected, so that makes this genus a huge candidate for Fasarium and scale. Goodness me, be on the hunt, be on the lookout for scale on Catlianthus, weak or not. There is something about these bifoliates that scale absolutely love, and for the most part, you will find them everywhere. They do not take any area of the orchid as preferred, but the worst area where you can have real issues with scale that will affect the long-term well-being of your cat Leanthe is at the base where the new eyes are. Once scale has attacked those areas, there are no more eyes for the orchid to form fast enough to ensure recovery. Again, depending Depending on strength, another eye can be formed elsewhere, but again, that takes time. Keep a real watchful close eye on your Catliantha orchids, healthy or struggling, when it comes to scale. Make sure that they don't reach the rhizome, otherwise it is already a race against time before the orchid has enough strength to try and form a new eye elsewhere along the rhizome. I hope that with this video I have managed to stop you from making any mistakes with your cat Leanthes. Let my years of trying to figure things out and get mine to this stage be of some value and avoid it happening to you. These tips and observations should stop anyone from getting a new cat Leanthes only to have her not bring long-term joy because similar mistakes or testing new media is what you may consider doing at the wrong time. I appreciate you watching to the end. Thank you so much. It gives me the opportunity to wish you a fabulous day, but I do attach a condition to that, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.